What's going on doll fans? It's your boy Dylan. Um, I'm making this video. This is going to be a um, uh, a video responding to a question that I got on um, you know one of my my recent videos. Um, <clears throat> in fact, it was the uh, it was the video the the response video that I made to Dougley Do Wrong, uh, you know, and his predictions for the season. And the question comes from Dolphin Fan All 32 NFL TV. And he asks me, so you want to fire Brian Flores before he even coaches a game? He's asking me, right? Do I want to do that? So I responded to him, uh, letting him know I was going to make a video, uh, responding to his question. It's a good question. And it definitely allows me the opportunity to clarify a bit uh, how I feel about this Brian Flores situation. So. Let me break it down for you. Here's how, and this, the, a lot of this actually applies to Stephen Ross as well, although with some slight differences. Now, uh, but let me let me talk about Brian Flores. So, there are two main issues that I have with Brian Flores: the professional um, issues that I have with him, and the personal issues that I, I, I have with him. Okay, that's the basics. Now, let's break that down a little bit professional issues I have with him are the football decisions that he's making and then personal decisions uh, like okay hold on so football decisions I'll even clarify that a little bit more I totally disagreed with um, to the extent with which he uh, purged the roster from right right from the beginning um, when Adam Gase was fired until now um, I would not have let Cam Wake go Joan James go um, I would have kept Amendola over Parker for sure. Um, I would have kept Josh Sitton as long as I could. To be fair, he did retire. So, um, you know, it is what it is there. But I would have at least tried to keep him in camp. I would not have traded Ryan Tannehill. I would, have not, I would not have picked up Ryan Fitzpatrick. I would not have uh, traded for Josh Rosen. I would have handled the draft exceptionally different i would have drafted garrett bradbury in the first round i would have taken a defensive lineman in the second round and i would have taken quarterback will greer in the third round so i i totally disagree with how they handled the draft um <clears throat> the two good things that i i can really give them credit for are ex extending xavier and howard although the major downside with that is that we're going to be wasting the prime years of, you know, a top-notch cornerback because we're going to be terrible. Um, uh, Jakeem Grant, the extension of Jakeem Grant, I gave them credit for. Although in that language, it's highly incentive-based. It's not base pay or, or you know, anything like that. It's very incentive-based. So, you know, um, that and the fact that they have a, a, a major out just next year it's a four-year contract but they have an out after the first year shows me that they don't really have a lot of confidence in him they're just doing it for like you know i don't know uh, I, I don't know it's hard to even really tell that's part of the problem is it's hard to even really tell what their plan is for anything um so i i dressed i very very much disagree with almost everything i i completely disagree with getting rid of uh, TJ McDonald, Kiko Alonzo, Kenny Stills, Tunsil, all of that. I don't care about the picks that they're accruing because, uh, again, uh, they uh, to me, they didn't handle this past draft at all correctly. They're not going to handle the future drafts correctly, in my opinion. Um, I would never take a quarterback in rounds one or two. I would never trade up to get a quarterback. I would take a quarterback every year, though, in round three or later, depending on how, you know, bad you really need one. Um, you know, so and so there's that aspect, the football aspect and then the personal aspect. Right. So I think that he's uh, just being a complete fucking sellout. And I think, honestly, he's being a bad person. Right. Like because. He's he's violated he's violated some of my fundamental morals um, 
you know, uh, uh, things that I believe, right? Like the same reasons why Kenny Stills and Albert Wilson and Eric Reed and Colin Kaepernick are, ca uh, are um, protesting, right? And, and so on and so forth. The reason why Colin Kaepernick got fired, essentially, and blackballed from the NFL. The reason why, same thing with Eric Reed, and it took forever, you know, uh, for him to, to finally get a, a, you know, a chance. Um, and I think that had a lot to do with why they traded Kenny Stills. Like, are you fucking kidding me? How could you not think? And a matter of fact, everybody's talking about it. But I hate how they frame it. Like someone framed it. Um, part of the reason why they're getting rid of him is because of his distraction. No, it's not him being the distraction. It's the racist, bigoted, misogynist uh, uh, president supporting owner that we have. That's the problem right and the fact that he's a sellout he's a minority he's a minority in this country and so he you know i had a major problem with him initially saying that uh kenny stills should have talked to stephen ross i mean seriously who the fuck really thinks that if kenny stills would have talked to stephen ross and said hey look i come you know i completely disagree with what you're doing here having a fundraiser financially supporting uh this asshole president's re-election campaign um, would you allow me to honestly speak out about that in the public? Do you, does anybody really think that Stephen Ross would have been like, oh yeah, totally, man, no worries. Just go ahead and fucking, you know, say bad things about me in public. And, and he even said it in like the most mundane, like politically correct, you know, uh, nice way that he possibly could. All he said was, is that, you know, supporting Donald Trump conflicts with the the mission statement of your of your organization rise ross inequality in sports uh, i'm sorry ross initiative for sports uh equality complete because it does because donald trump's policies completely contradict the whole purpose and point of that foundation and so that's why that's why stephen ross is look while he might not personally try to to uh demonize or demagogue against minorities while he might not personally discriminate against them he supports a person in power who does and so he is by proxy racist he said it himself almost uh you know essentially i'm not a racist but his racism isn't a deal breaker for me and by steven or by uh, Brian Flores supporting Stephen Ross over Kenny Stills. Yes, he then violated because now he's uh, matter of fact, Eric Reed said that Jay-Z is the NFL's token black guy because of how he's handling this whole partnership with them, right? You know, and the way he kind of spoke out against, or not against, but but tried to speak for the activists when he was never an activist really himself right how he was like oh yeah we're past kneeling okay well then why is kenny stills and albert wilson who said he's going to continue kneeling so if the people who are actually doing the activism are not past it how can you speak for us and say that right so brian flores is is now the token black guy for Stephen Ross and, and well, you could also really lump uh, Chris Greer. So it's the Tolkien black guys. Essentially, that's what it is. They're being sellouts. And then his second statement, this one really fucking threw me over the edge with him and made me lose a ton of respect for him, was when he said that he needs to be a company man. What that translates into is, is that Kenny Stills needed to bow his head and do what he was told. Shut up and do what he was told. But that's not Kenny Stills. But matter of fact, the dude, Kenny Stills won the fucking um, community service award from the Dolphins the past two years for being such a big activist and for doing so much community service and shit like that. But then they go and penalize him and fire him and trade him because uh, of, of all of that. It's not his distraction. And every single fucking thing that Brian Flores had to say afterwards was just an excuse. Those were his first two comments. His third comment was finally, oh, okay, you know, uh, but I back the players. I back the players in what they're doing. Uh, and why? Because, essentially because I'm a black man in America is what he said. Essentially. I'm paraphrasing. What he said was, 
because I've experienced it too, which I don't deny. He is, an, he is a minority in this country, and so I'm sure he has experienced that. Although, you know, now he's certainly a wealthy African-American in this country because he, that contract he got is worth a lot of fucking money. So I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Hmm, that's interesting. But so finally he says that he backs him up, but all he did was repeat those th like two things. It was just a talking point for him. Because if it was true, you would have said that right off the bat and you wouldn't have traded the fucking guy. Okay, so yes, I don't want Brian Flores to be our coach anymore because I have both personal and professional issues with the guy. But just from just from if if I if I take out the the, the personal issues which are significant and it, by the way it does affect the team because you think that there aren't guys on the team like let's say Albert Wilson who continues and will continue to kneel. You think that there aren't going to be plenty a Rashad Jones with the way he's seen this organiza organization goes. You think these guys are and and plenty more than that. What about Kenyon Drake? There were rumors that he could be traded, right? And with the way he sees Jerome Baker had even made some comments, right? So look, dude, you think that there's not going to be any dissension? You think that all of these guys on this team are really going to be completely bought into this, this system and this guy with the way he's going about this? With the way he's showing to be a fucking, just a heartless dude with really no fucking plan? Uh, uh, just a, uh, I mean, maybe, okay, to be fair, maybe he's not totally heartless, but he's certainly a fucking sellout without fucking question. But you leave all the personal stuff out of it, even though it does have major ramifications for this team and for the players and stuff on it. People don't want to come here. Players don't want to come here now. Jadavion Clowney made it abundantly clear he didn't want to play for Miami. We got John Denny, after they fucking, there are rumors. It, there's no substantiating this and he probably wouldn't say it because he's an upstanding guy but there are rumors that he you know maybe uh part of the reason why he's you know leaving the dolphins is because man i don't really want to be here even john denny the longest tenure now again to be fair there's no corroborating evidence for that but people have been floating the idea around but it's clear that fucking people don't want to fucking be here because of the fucking debacle and disaster that's going on. Again, though, and I know I haven't actually gotten to the final point here on that, but take all the personal shit out, uh, you know, out of it. Just from a football standpoint, all of the terrible decisions he's made, I still, just on that alone, I would still say he deserves the five years of his contract to see if he can prove me wrong. To see if his way is the right way, right? Just from a football aspect. When you add the other stuff in, yes, I do not want Brian Flores to be our coach anymore because I think he is destroying. I made a video a couple videos ago that Brian Flores is breeding a toxic environment here uh, with the Dolphins. And I said it before, I said it in my last video, I don't want to be the Patriots. I don't like the Patriot way. How many players have said that they hated being on the Patriots? They liked the winning, but they hated the fucking way that it's all, it's run and stuff, right? Because, and, and they're fucking, they're cheaters. They're underhanded. They're shady. They do fucking bullshit like tell their left tackle, hey, you know, I'm not going to fucking trade you and then trade him. He's, li he's a liar. He's deceitful. He's lying to the fucking fan base saying that we're not taking it doesn't matter how much he wants that to be the case it doesn't matter how much you know every sunday he you know wants to to win the game or think that um you know the players are going to go out there and try their hardest for him to win which frankly i think we'll see is actually going to not be the case how much you want to bet that there's going to be talk throughout the season of players uh you know bowing out and not fucking buying into all of this Dude, I mean, like seriously, so at the end of the day, just from a football perspective, I would say still give him the five years because I advocate for regimes to have a five-year window, but this is a little bit, you know, uh, a little bit bigger than just football though. Again, because there, there's the personal aspect that I have with it that, uh, is a major factor in my decision for why I don't want Flores here. But aside from that, 
I mean, he's destroying the team in every way imaginable. Not just from downgrading ne at nearly every position, um, but he's going to waste the couple players that we have left as building blocks, the prime years of their careers. Um, you know, he's, he's breeding this toxic culture within the Dolphins. Adam Gase was doing it right. He was saying, look, if you produce for us, we got your back. Right? You get our back, we got yours. If we draft you here and you can produce for us and develop for us, we got you. We're going to sign you. We're going to extend you. Right? He, he was building a culture where he wanted, he wanted his players to be able to talk to him, bounce ideas off him. Right? But... Jerome Baker, oh, I remember what Jerome Baker said. He was like, because he was asked, he was asked if people, um, if the players wanted to ask Brian Flores about, you know, why he traded Tunsil and stuff. And his response, I'm paraphrasing, but his response was somewhere around, um, yeah, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of guys that want to ask, but we essentially uh, fear for our jobs because we could be next. So nobody does want to ask. Are you kidding me? That's a terrible way to fucking run it. He's not going to replicate what the Patriots have. It's not going to happen. So, look, at the end of the day, if I'm if because I'm I'm not a person who, you know, excludes context and excludes all relevant factors. So I do include the the personal stuff. And so when I when when from everything the big picture um yeah i i just i flat out don't want brian flores to be our our, our coach because already in such a short time he has proven to be from my perspective terrible at making football decisions as a head coach and he's proven to just be a fucking a, a sellout to the rich and the wealthy uh you know who run the uh, the i.e. Uh, Steven Ross, who runs this team, who owns this team. Like, it's it's total bullshit. So, but, it, but, again, just strictly, no matter how bad his football decisions have been, I would say just from that, if I was to exclude the personal stuff, which, again, still does bleed into the team, then um, I would say give him the five years. No matter how disastrous... Right, because I've been saying it for a while. Even if we were before all the the personal drama, before all that stuff, because before all this shit happened, I was saying that he seems like a good guy and so on and so forth, a hard worker, blah blah blah. Well, your actions speak louder than your words, buddy. So sorry, you lost my respect there too. But you know, just from a personal, I was saying. You know, even if we even if we went 0-16 for the first three years of his career or of his time here, I would still give him the first five years, or I would give him the full five years, excuse me, of his guarant supposedly guaranteed contract, right? Um, because you should have the opportunity, you should have the opportunity, right? But both areas, uh, he's he's completely lost me on. So, uh, I hope that answers your question. I, I don't think I could be any more clear. I broke it down in as nuanced and as detailed a way that I possibly can. So, I hope people get it. And, and look, just one more thing. I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to let go of the, the personal aspect because it's huge. A lot of people are, are trying to either blame Kenny Stills by saying he was the, by saying he was the distraction. By the way, if Brian Flores really wanted it to go away... Um, you know, saying he should talk to Steven Ross, call it, say he should be a company man, and then play eight straight Jay-Z songs the next day at practice, yeah, probably not the, the best way to make that go away. Your first public statement being, I support my players, and you, that would have been it. You wouldn't have had to say nothing else. I support my players. And then you know, not play the Jay-Z songs and then not trade the guy. That's how you could have shown it, but you didn't. You chose to be a scumbag. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I'm not going to let it go because it's a major thing. And because I back Kenny Stills and Albert Wilson for what they're doing, 
And unfortunately, politics bleeds into everything in this world. So anyway, that's how I'm going to end it. Again, I hope it answers your question. I couldn't have been more clear as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, you know, take it for what you will. Y'all can decide how y'all want to based off of all of that stuff. I mean, none of what I said that he did or has said or whatever. It's not like I made anything up. It's all fact. You can look it up for yourself. Um, and I mean, you can decide for yourself on whether or not you agree with the football decisions he's making. Some people do. I think that's crazy personally, but again, just from that aspect, we can let it play out. We can let it play out and see what happens. Um, I mean, we're going to have to, we don't really have a choice there. So we will see what happens. Um, anyway, I'm going to get up out of here. I hope you guys enjoy my videos. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. As you see, I will answer them for you. Um, and of course, as always, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see y'all soon. Fins up.